Hi, everybody. Our name is Dr. Serenity Sensacion, and we're going to talk to you a little bit about how you can use um, comics as plural systems. So a little bit about us. We're a psychologist. We're also a plural system. Um, we're Puerto Rican. We live in the United States right now. Um, we're also queer and identify as non-binary as a, as a system. And we make comics a lot because it's really fun. So we've been doing comics for, pro I don't know, a long time, a very long time. It feels like forever, but I think it was probably in the last 10 years, it's still quite a while, that we started to make comics more. Um, and in fact, about five or six years ago, we started a diary comic where we drew almost every day for I think three to four years, a long time. Um, we ended up having to take a break from that because it was it was a bit much, but now we just make uh, comics still pretty consistently, a few pages a week, I would say, um, just to figure out, out a lot of our own stuff. So this is going to be about how you all can use comics. So here here and through, the, <laughs> through, through this, we'll have a lot of pictures from our comics. All the ones you see are stuff that we've, we've drawn. And uh, we usually draw ourselves as a as an anthro cat when it's the whole system. So that's why you'll see that often. Okay, so why comics? Um, comics are a really good way to be creative and to be able to use pictures and text to be able to talk to other people. So sometimes it can be hard to communicate your feelings just with images or just with text. And this is a cool way where you can use both of them. It could be that you all feel safer communicating in this way. Like for example, maybe it gives you some distance, like you make a short comic and then you put it online or give it to a friend and you wait for them to respond rather than um, talking to them about it directly. So that can be, that can be one of the reasons why this, this is helpful. Also for some people, they can express themselves better um, by drawing them verbally. So it could be that when you're talking about something, it's really hard to express yourself, but if you draw it, then you realize, oh, this is an easy way for me to express how I'm feeling. Sometimes other people can understand your feelings better too. So maybe you're having a hard time expressing a feeling by doing it through art. They might not be able to, to, mm, to express what they're seeing in a verbal way either, but maybe they can feel it internally in a similar way to you all. Um, another cool thing about drawing in general is that all of us who are plural and in systems, we can represent ourselves as we actually are. I know that's something that we really appreciate. So even though we have um, a visual that we use as a, as a system, um, all of us draw ourselves pretty accurately. Although I think in this presentation, we only have the way that we show ourselves as a, as a system or a group. But um, in our comics, we often draw ourselves the way that we actually look, which is really nice. How can comics help? So sometimes it can help you gain insight into yourself, into the system itself. It can provide education for other people, friends, families, um, anyone really. It can help you communicate with each other internally. So one example would be, hmm, so in the same way we were just talking about communication, maybe it's hard to talk to someone else in the same system. And one way that you could do that is by drawing comics for each other or, or something like that. Like um, maybe someone in the system feels safer communicating some worry that they have to you that way. Or maybe um, someone might find out that someone else in the system is going through a hard time because they're seeing their art and that's an easier way to, to talk about it. It's also a different way to talk about um, difficult topics and what that means is so art therapy in general can be really helpful because um, sometimes it's hard to talk about things that are difficult and potentially like traumatic but if you draw them you might be able to express them and then maybe that way you can talk to other people your therapist friends anyone like that another thing that's really cool is that once you complete a comic you've actually completed like this project right like you've made something that's yours now and that's a really nice feeling to have. And a comic can be really short. Even one page is already some, something, but there are some comics that are like, we've made something like five to 10 pages, and this is really nice to, to have that sense of completion. Um, so it can also help document sometimes in your life so that you can go back and look at them later. For example, the comic we were mentioning that we did daily for, 
again, like three to four years, it's really interesting to go back and look at it and be like, wow, um, I, I remember a lot of the time, but there's no way you're going to remember things that you were thinking about <clears throat> every day, right? And in this one, because we have an almost daily comic, it is interesting to go back and be like, oh yeah, that is what was happening then, good and bad. I mean, there's some things that are really stressful and there's other things like, oh, we went to the movies to say and we saw this movie together, like stuff that's fun like that. Um, this is also helpful for maybe processing our mental health work. So for example, let's say that you're able to kind of reflect back on these things. Um, it, you could be working on things on your own or if you're seeing a therapist, you could bring that to them and be like, hey, this is some of the stuff that I was feeling and thinking at the time. So do you know how to, do you, do you need to know how to draw? No. <laughs> I feel like a lot of people ask us this, our clients ask us this all the time because we like doing art therapy. Um, you don't need to know how to draw to do art therapy or to make comics. You, you really don't. First of all, even doing a stick figure is fine. <laughs> you can do a stick figure and add text and that'd be fine. And I'm forgetting the name of it, but there, there are some famous comics that are basically just stick figures. Um, so, um, I'm just realizing the pun that one of us put in there is basically, if you all enjoy drawing, you might be drawn to it. We have some terrible puns in here. Um, so yeah, if you all like drawing, it might be something you like to do more, but you really don't need to know how to draw already. What's important is to be able to figure out how to express yourself. So you can use anything you want. It could be shapes, stick figures. Um, I think we talk about this a little bit later, but you can also use photos. Some people do that instead. So like taking a photo and then adding text to it, um, anything really, anything you can think of. So actually even, um, there, there, I was thinking there are those generators for like um, art online. You could use those. I mean, as long as you're not using it to profit, if it's just for you, I think that's okay. So all that's important is to focus on expressing yourselves and just enjoying the process. That's basically what you need to do. If learning to draw is important, then sure, you can do that together. I know that for us, we, we really like drawing. Uh, we try. <laughs> All of us draw at different levels, but we do enjoy getting better at it together. Um, and that, that's been kind of cool. So this, <laughs> this thing that we put at the bottom of this, sometimes we have sketches that we used to do in, um, in school mostly. So because, because we have a doctorate, we were in school for a long time. That, that is the short way to, to explain that. And this is one of them. It's so all it says is chip drama. One of them says, oh no, the other one, I've been dipped. It's very dramatic. Um, we added, we tried to add some stuff that would be a little bit lighthearted in this. Okay, so where do you start? Really, you can start anywhere. Um, we would recommend picking a topic that is easier at, at first. So something that's not really heavy or um, difficult, something more lighthearted. And the reason why is because especially if you want to use this to process things that are harder, it can be easier to get comfortable in making a comic with a topic that isn't as difficult to talk about first. So it could just be like, what happened today if today was an okay day? Or I don't know, anything, anything really that's going on that feels comfortable for you. It is helpful to have some sort of topic and focus because it is it basically helps you to be able to draw better if you know what the, the, the goal is, rather than staring at a page and being like, I don't know what I'm supposed to do with this. Um, so what's helpful is to be somewhat specific, but not to the point where it's too constraining. So like, for example, okay, I'm gonna draw a comic about today, um, and then, but not about like, I'm gonna draw a comic about what happened at this specific hour. And if drawing a comic about today is still too, feels a little bit too much. It could be like, okay, I'm going to draw a comic about something that happened in the past week that I'm thinking about. Even if you don't think it's that important, it really doesn't matter. The point is to, to start. So we put some examples of what you can use as prompts for the beginning. It could be what happened today, could be your favorite food, really, like you could draw a comic about that, or an activity that you all enjoy, whatever that is, just drawing a little bit about what that activity is for you. So creating a comic. After you think about a topic, you want to try to bring it to life, right? And that can be uh, complicated. One thing that's helpful is to figure out what type of comic you want to do. So we tend to like traditional stuff a lot more than digital, but that's just our, us personally. So all the stuff that you're seeing are things that we drew by hand. We might have edited them a little bit on computer, but we don't um, particularly like 
doing digital art. However, it's completely up to you what you're going to do. If you go the traditional route, all you need is like what pens, uh, pencil, notebook, etc. Really, even a ballpoint pen is fine. I know that when, um, like you don't need all the fancy art stuff is what we're saying. So when we first started drawing this more often, ball, ballpoint pens were something that we used in pencils. Like it doesn't have to be fancy. At some point you might want to invest in getting a nicer pen, but you don't, you're, you don't really need it. For digital, um, for some people that might be more accessible, just because maybe you already have a computer or phone that has some sort of drawing program, right? And so you might want to do that instead. That's perfectly fine. So some different ways to go about it could be drawing the scenes themselves. So that would be drawing a scene and adding text. You can do that either digitally or traditionally. It doesn't really matter. With photos, uh, it's a little bit easier if this one's digital, but that would be taking photos and then adding text to the photos to explain kind of what's going on or express what you're feeling. Uh, you could do this traditionally, it'd just be harder to do. Um, so some people like using photos because you, it could be a little bit easier for them. They might feel like, okay, I, I feel comfortable taking pictures of things rather than drawing everything out that I want to show, and that, that's okay. Also on a side note, so the, um, the drawing we have here is mostly washi tape. We're really into washi tape. So um, you can totally add washi tape to stuff if you want to, too. I will say it's kind of a pain. As fun as it is, it is a pain to have to be cutting out these tiny pieces of tape, but just another alternative for traditional art, because I don't know how you do washi tape digitally. I'm sure there's a way, but we don't know. Okay, <clears throat> so some other options. After you've practiced, and again, we would recommend practicing with a, a, maybe a few times those topics that just feel more lighthearted and not, not as serious, um, then you can try more difficult topics. So one could be talking to other people in the system. This doesn't necessarily have to be difficult. It's just that if you're, if you all are having trouble communicating with each other, then it probably will be a hard thing to do to try and communicate um, through art. But it, it is a different way to go about it and it might work better. Some things that could happen is that may, or some things you can do would be drawing a comic for people that you care about in your life. So maybe drawing a comic about how you feel about something or, um, or trying to explain something. So for example, when you're, mm, so one of the things that we've done personally is that when we're trying to explain to our friends who are singlet about who we are, it has been a lot easier to draw it as a comic. They still have difficulty understanding, but I, I do feel like that they have a better understanding by, by seeing it visually, especially when we're drawing different people and kind of trying to draw metaphorically what it feels like rather than just talking about it. Because it can be really hard for a singlet to understand what it's like to not be singlet, right? Um, so that's just one example of something you could do. Some other things that are harder would be maybe processing memories or trauma through comics. It can be really useful to do this. Now, when you're going, when you're, when you're doing this topic, it doesn't have to be something you share with other people. It could be something just for yourself, maybe just people in the system read it. But maybe you do want to show it to somebody else and it could be like, okay, people that you trust or your therapist and you're showing them, these are kind of like the experiences we had or even um, here's what I'm thinking about it. Like the one we have here is one where um, we were dealing with some things internally and this is kind of like what was on our mind at, at the time. So it's an example of like something that you might be able to do. Some things to consider as well. So the process of making a comic can be stressful. Um, we feel like sometimes it's not just the topic, it's that people get really caught up in, oh, I can't draw, or I, I don't draw as well as I want to, or it's not coming out. Like th there's a lot of stress that goes into that, and that frustration can lead to a lot of problems. Um, also having an art block, so maybe you do have a topic, you have everything out, and you're like, I somehow this isn't working. Um, the topic itself can be triggering or overwhelming. Um, and also some practical stuff. You might not have access to the resources you want to make a comic. Really anything can work, but let's say that you want to use something specific and you don't have that, that could be tough. So there's some things to consider. First of all, again, level of ability doesn't, doesn't really matter. Like this is, this is something that's more for your own benefit. Having an art block can be tough. Um, 
one of the things we recommend is just taking a break, just walking away, either coming back to it later or maybe a different day and just doing something totally different. If a topic of a comic is becoming too triggering or overwhelming, that is also a time to take a break. Um, like maybe processing what's coming up for you, um, why, why that was triggering in itself and just doing some grounding and checking in. So, and, and for the material part, again, any, anything, anything works, anything you have access to. So here are some other things that can help. So like we said, grounding can help with anxiety or stress. And grounding is, um, hopefully, hopefully you all, well, hopefully there's other ways you all can learn this, but it could be things like um, mm, checking in with what's in the room and reminding yourself of where you are, um, talking to other people, checking in, maybe doing some sensory stuff like using incense or um, essential oils or really anything, anything that would be helpful to kind of get yourself out of the, the space that you're in when you were feeling triggered and into a space where you're feeling a bit more calm. Um, so taking a break is important. Um, cheesecake, as we listed here, also a possibility, very delicious. Um, and also, so any type of self-care, sometimes drawing something lighter is helpful. So I know what has helped us every once in a while has been, um, instead of taking a full break, maybe drawing something silly or um, drawing something completely unrelated to anything that we were doing just to kind of get out of that space. Also using different materials. And I, and that might seem, uh, maybe, maybe it seems odd, but I know like some days when we're stressed, we just want to sit down and like focus on cutting all those tiny little washi tape pieces because it can be very uh, calming or frustrating depending on the day or the opposite going from that and being like, I can't take this anymore. Let me just use a pen and paper. Or um, if you're doing something traditionally going to digital or vice versa. So there's a lot of things that you can do. So for comic format, there's honestly so many formats. So we're just going over a few of the like more basic formats that you've probably seen. Um, and then you all can kind of take it from there. But these, this will hopefully give you um, kind of like a base to start from. So four panel is the one that you see in the US anyway, you see the most common in, in newspapers, although we don't really have many newspapers anymore. So I'm trying to figure out like if people, um, especially younger people know what I'm talking about, but, but they're basically the four panel ones that go horizontally. Some web comics also use this format. So maybe that's what you're more familiar with. It could be a web comic instead. And then vertical, and we'll, we'll, we'll show some examples of this. You mostly see that in Japan and other countries in, in Asia. And it's called four coma, which we'll explain later, but, but that is a format you see where it's going downwards. We've also seen this a lot on mobile um, comic sites, which makes sense because when you're on your phone, right, it's, it's a rectangle. So when you're scrolling, if you have this um, vertical type of comic, it reads really well on your phone. So a lot of people have kind of moved to that format. The difference is that even when they have it in different panels, Sometimes they have it in almost endless scrolling. So then you have like page after page. You might not know that's what you're looking at, but you're looking at page after page in a row. So um, traditional page format is just that. It's just like what you would imagine, like a page maybe you've seen in like, um, like superhero comic books. Those are pretty common. Um, also web comics or, or manga, like just in the regular page that you would see. There's a lot of different formats that go into that like a lot of different ways of, of paneling, but we're not, we're not gonna go into the details of that. Just know that's one type of drawing a comic. Um, all you need to know is that you, when you do that, the panels in the comic should be helping move the story from one point to another. So the only thing you have to remember is that it, it, hopefully for the person reading it, they can follow um, how it's set up. Sometimes you can use arrows, it's not the best, but you can. So just try to make it really streamlined and depending on um, what, what country you're in and how books are formatted in your country, that'll, that'll change this. So you, basically the panel should go in the same direction as whatever anybody writes goes in, right? So depending on how things are, are written, like the, the orientation of that is how the, the panel should be. Like they should all go in the same direction. Hopefully that makes sense. And, and this is why um, Japanese comics are flipped as compared to those in the US, for example, because when you're writing in Japanese, that is how you write. Like it's from top to bottom, and then you're going from, from right to left. Um, I realize that I think this is mirrored, so I'm going to look backwards, but, and then in the US, it's, it's the opposite, so. Okay, so the last one we're gonna talk about is a one panel page, and we'll also show an example of this. 
people online use this a lot. I, we've especially seen this on like Instagram, um, sometimes on Webtoons too. But it's basically when you have only one page with one panel in text, like there's not, there aren't multiple panels. So in this one we have here on, on the screen, this one has three panels. So you can see three distinct like boxes. So one page would be imagine if it was just one of these by itself, although normally it's a rectangle, but anyway, so as we said before, there are a ton of other types of comics, so don't, don't let this um, stop you, basically. So for com comics, um, these are ones we mentioned before, we're talking mostly about the setup for the Japanese for coma because we couldn't find a good explanation of how the newspaper ones are supposed to um, flow. So, but it's the same, uh, well, it's pretty much the same thing. So hopefully this makes sense. But basically when you have a four panel, th there's, a, there's good and bad. Um, I guess on, on the good side is that because you're more constrained, it's only four panels. So you know, okay, once I do four panels, I'm done. <laughs> you know, like that's the whole thing. That was, that was what I was gonna do. Which is different than a page where you could have two panels, you could have like 10, I don't know that you would wanna do that, but you could. So it helps to have some structure. Um, on, on the negative side, it would be that that also constrains you. So it could be that what you're doing doesn't really make sense in a four panel comic. And if that happens, you might want to change to something else. But I think this is a good one for beginners to start with, just because it's really easy to, to have this format. And here's like what, um, so the reason why it's called for coma is um, because this is the, um, basically this is, how can I explain this? It's, it's like the, the shortened version of what these words are in Japanese. So you, like, you can look at what we wrote and hopefully this makes more sense. But so the first one you're doing, and I, I'm not gonna go into the Japanese words themselves, um, but if you're interested, you can look more into this. So the first panel is setting the scene. So it's like the opening. That's also usually where if you have a title, like a mini title, you'd have it. Like um, the ones you'd see in newspapers often will have their little title there. And then the second one, you're building on whatever happened in the first panel. So you're going, okay, I have present the characters and now we're building on that to something. The third one should be the, the high point of the story. So like things have been happening and now we're at this point where there's something going on, some sort of difficulty or um, something, or maybe a setup for a joke if you're doing a, a comedic one, that would be where it's going. And then the conclusion or resolution would go after. So like what happened after the joke happened or what happened after this um, event? How was it resolved? And that's it. Also, most people put their name there. So often title goes in the first one, name goes in the last one. You don't have to do this. We're just giving an example of kind of what it looks like. So these are some of the ones that we did. Um, these are pretty old at this point. But we did them when we were in our undergrad. When we, this is like right after we moved to the United States. Um, they are very silly, but hopefully they make sense. So the first one is um, kind of a joke because the, the school that, well, the university we went to was really strict about Halloween parties and what people could bring in and what they couldn't, which, which makes sense because it could be dangerous. But the joke is basically that we, we were dressed as clouds. This didn't actually happen. Um, and that basically they took away everything. So everyone was like, oh, we're just college student because all our costumes were confiscated at the door. Anyway. And the second one is because we used to joke about squirrels all the time. We don't actually dislike squirrels. We just enjoy them in an interesting way. And uh, we had never seen squirrels till we came to the United States. So this is a comic about squirrels. But you can see like how, um, like especially in the first one, it's like, okay, you're setting up the character. You can see that there's a conflict at the door because they're wearing a costume. And then the, the conflict is like the internal conflict of like, oh, this sucks. And then in the dance, it's like, oh, it doesn't matter, everybody's the same. So see what I mean? Like you, you, you kind of you want to try to have that format. So we tried to pick a simple page, not one that was too complicated. This is from a comic that we draw. And this is just one example. Um, this one is read Western style. So don't read, so read it basically um, left to, to right is what you should be doing. But um, all this one is like this, it's this uh, kid that goes to different dimensions and weird stuff happens and every dimension is a comic we like doing every once in a while for ourselves as you can see you have like a little bit of a setup at the top and the bottom is a bigger panel just to show that they're distressed about the weird place that they're in but you can do a ton of panels in this type of format we just tried picking one with less so that hopefully it was a little bit easier 
to understand. And this, these are some examples of one panel um, comics. We were trying to find one that had more of the like picture and text uh, at the bottom, um, but we didn't really find a good one or no, none that we really felt comfortable sharing. So we put these instead. The first one is one that um, one of us did when we were working on our dissertation because it was a very difficult time, our doctoral dissertation. And so we kept drawing the dissertation as like a Hydra monster or like mocking us. We have a lot of comics about dissertation. So this is a very like RPG um, comic about it. The other one is actually from our daily comic that we did before. And um, we just really liked how it came out. So our daily comic is actually one panel pages because they're a bit easier to do. So it's like, you know, because doing a, a whole page every day would be a lot. Like it was a page with multiple panels. And we do that sometimes, but usually it's like a picture with some text or something like this. And in this one, we were just thinking about a lot of stuff from our past. And this is the drawing we had that day. And you can see this is like quite a few years ago now. So we wanted to add an example of a different format for a comic page. This is one that we did for a, a, um, a Latinx anthology that was put together. Um, even though it's a Latinx anthology, it's, it, that's more just to indicate that everybody came from a similar background. I believe we were the only person who was not cisgender in, in the anthology, is, is what I understand. And so because of that, we decided to focus specifically on the struggles that we had in our gender and so um, and how that intersected with, with our with our culture and background. So the, the reason that we did that or that we did this format was to kind of like show that a little bit clearer. Also, we, we don't tend to like um, color comics as much, but we've been trying to get better at it. So this is one of the first times that we were trying to do that. And as you can see, like the color is supposed to be representative of um, like on the girl side, we have blue in the background because that's what's missing. And then on the boy side, we have the pink in the background because that's kind of what miss what's missing. And then you can see our face in the middle and kind of like all these things happening at once. Like it, it's, it's, it's written this way because the hope is that people would read it in a circle and that it doesn't matter where you start, you would, you would get to the same place. So, but there's a lot of other interesting formats. There's a lot of um, comic artists that do some really cool, cool stuff. Okay, so now that you've made some comics, what do you do with them, right? Um, there's a lot of options on how to show them to people if that's what you all want. So you could put them on websites. A few that people use are like Instagram and Tumblr. Those, um, you don't get a lot of traffic for comics because they're not really meant for comics. But well, actually Instagram, we've been seeing more of them on there. Um, but because a lot of people go to those websites, it is a good way to get people to read them. Uh, it's just that the, the format of the sites and the apps are not, not very good for comics. There are some comic specific sites that you might wanna look into. All of them have different, um, like rules and regulations and things like that. So you want to look into that and make sure that that kind of fits what you want. But many of these are free. Actually, all the ones I think we put are free. So um, Tapas, we, uh, which used to be like like Tapastic, but they changed their name. Comic Fury, Smack Jeeves, Webtoon, and the Duck Web Comics. All of those are free. You can upload your stuff online. And they're made for comics. So you don't have to worry about making your own website, for example. You can just put them up, people can click through them, like it's pretty easy. Uh, Gumroad, a lot of people distribute their comics that way. And this is more like you upload a file or a PDF and people can pay you, or you can put it for free, but basically they're downloading your comic to read. So it isn't, I, I, I'm actually, I think there is a way to read on Gumroad, but usually it's like you download the file and then you read on your own. Another thing you could do is you could publish on paper, go real old school, uh, print out your cell fold and staple it. So, you know, like, uh, like, like, like zines, like that, that's how those are done usually. It, it can be difficult to get the printing right on your own, especially the first time, because sometimes it's, it's hard to know what, what way do you print them so that when you fold them, they're all in the right position. It's kind of, it's kind of annoying. Um, there are some programs that help you with that, but also you can just kind of like figure it out if you want to do that. Um, you can also, when we say um, using a printer, what we actually meant was using like like a, a printer that you go to, like like a store or someplace you send your files to, like, like a print shop, and they'll do it for you. You can always still go back to just printing and stapling it yourself, but sometimes that's really helpful because there's a lot of them that, if you want to make a few of them anyway, um, they'll even check your files for you. 
to make sure that the orientation will be right. So you don't have to worry about that. You are paying for it though. And unless you're ordering a lot, it can be expensive. So it's up to you if you want to use this option. There are some places where it's not too expensive. Like it might just be like a dollar or two um, for, for like just a few pages, but that's only if you do the print and staple. So basically they're just doing that work for you for a few dollars. If you want like an actual like book book, those are, those are pricey. Okay, so now your comic is available. Now what do you do? So it's out there, it's either printed or online. Um, honestly, it's hard to publish a comic, just in general. No, no matter the format, it's really hard to get people who are reading it at first because it's just, um, that's just the nature of things. It's hard to get your stuff out there. So if that's what you're trying to do, um, just, just know that it takes time. It has nothing to do with you or the quality of your comic or anything like that. It's just that it's, it's hard to, to get noticed. Um, just because there, especially like online, there's just so much out there that it's hard to be, um, one of the many. But if you're doing it mostly for friends and family, honestly, it doesn't really matter because you're going to be giving the link to people you care about and they'll be reading it. So if you did decide that you want to like have, so maybe you want to do informational comics for other people, or you do kind of want to have, um, have more of a presence online, it's really important to connect to other artists. So other people who are doing similar comics in the, like, especially on the same websites that you're using, talking to them, be active in the community or like, like in real life, connecting to other artists and talking to them and just building that network. Mm. Oh yeah. Um, so one way to do that also is like conventions and um, groups and things like that. So it's important to check in on your own mental health, especially if you're writing about things that are personal. Let's say for example, you write a comic that's a lot more personal for you all and you don't get many responses and maybe you were hoping you would, that can be really painful. It doesn't necessarily mean that it wasn't well received. It doesn't mean that, like it, it doesn't mean anything about you all at, at all, actually. Um, if you had given it to friends and family, I think you can talk to them about it. Some people feel more comfortable talking to in person. So even if they're not leaving a comment or something, it doesn't mean they didn't read it um, or see it, but you might, they might just be the type that wants to talk to you. Um, also, like we said before, getting an audience, especially online, is just hard. So it doesn't mean that it wasn't valuable. It's just that it might, maybe a lot of people didn't see it yet, and that, that's okay. For people in your life, I think it's important to also tell them how important that is to you. So maybe letting them know, hey, this comic was harder for me. I really want, um, I'd really like for you to read it and let me know what you think. That prompt in itself can help. Because I think that sometimes people might not even be clear, like, oh, I did read it, but I, I didn't realize it was that important to you. Um, and, and sure, I'll, I'll let you know what I thought. You know, so, so just being open with people about that and just doing the best to soothe yourselves. So here are some references and resources. Um, so first of all, this is like the main information we have. If you have any other questions, let us know. Um, you can always leave comments on the video or um, I believe our contact information will be in, the, in there, so you can always reach out to us if you want more information, that's, that's totally fine. Um, but we wanted to give you all some resources you can look at on, on your own. Here are some of the books that we found to be really helpful. All of Scott McLeod's books, super useful. Um, we would recommend maybe um, trying it a little bit first, or, or at least someone who's read comics first before getting into them. And, and we say that because even though his comics are great, he, he basically draws comics about drawing comics. It's very meta and it's good, but it can be a bit overwhelming. So when we've gone through his books, um, sometimes what we've done, especially if we want to like practice or just learn more, is to be like, okay, I'm going to read on this topic because usually he has like uh, little chapters or things like that or a few pages. I'm going to think about it and then come back because um, they're pretty big. They're like not small books. And so you don't want to get overwhelmed by like, all these things and he got, often goes into history of comics which is really cool but also like it's a lot. Um, Will Eisner, his stuff is definitely more like a textbook. Uh, a lot of people know him, he's like really big in the field, he, his books are great but it's better for if you like textbooks because it's more a lot of text and some examples. Um, Scott McCloud's are literally comics teaching about comics so depending on how you learn one or the other could be more useful.
And then the last one we have, this one, I, I don't know how popular it is, to be honest. It was really useful for us when it first came out. Um, it's called Drawing Words and Writing Pictures. The reason that we liked it is because it was very easy to understand, and it even had recommendations on like activities to do and things like that. So at the time, we were meeting with a group pretty, pretty much weekly to draw, and we would try to read it, do the activities together. It was, it was just really helpful. You don't need to do it with a group. It's just that um, having those practice exercises were, were useful and just fun to do. Um, so I, I feel like the last one's probably the most approachable one, but the other two uh, have a lot more information. So whatever y'all would want to look at. And then we'll leave this here for a minute. So these are all the different websites we mentioned before that you can publish for, for free. And so if you're interested, you can always just pause the video and take down some of the websites, check them out. Again, a few things to think about. So one, the fact that um, they all have different regulations and rules, like we said, that's important because, for example, sometimes it'll say, oh, um, anything you publish on our site can't be published anywhere else. That's actually pretty unusual unless you're being uh, sponsored by them. But it's still important to just check those things out. Like, okay, if I publish here, does this give this company any rights over what I'm doing? You know, because you don't really want that. Most of them do not do that. And a few times things like that have come up, they, they stop pretty quickly. So, but still. Um, Gumroad, I don't think has anything like that, but I'm more talking about the first few. Another thing to look at is the format. So um, the way the way that they're presented is very different. And maybe you'll go to one website and be like, oh, I don't like the format of this one. But you go to another one, it's like, oh, this is like really easy to read. I like how it's set up. So you might pick it based on that. And it might also be if they have a good mobile app. Um, so the only ones I, I've used the mobile app for is Tapas and Webtoons. Um, yeah, so I don't know. I feel like they're both okay. Webtoons I feel like is, is a bit better, but it's also because a lot of the comics that people draw there are made for being on the web or being in a mobile format. And for tapas, it's such a range that I think that that's really part of the issues that sometimes when you're looking at your phone, it's too small. So just some things to think about, like you can look at all these websites and figure out, okay, which one fits me the best. So that's pretty much all we have on our end. Um, hopefully that was useful for you all. I thought that we had a questions um, thing, but I think we took it down because <laughs> this isn't really going to be playing live. However, if there is an opportunity to do live questions, we'll do that. And if not, you can always put questions in the comments and we'll, we'll do our best to get back to people. Um, also, if you end up making a comic, it'd be really cool to see what you all make. I think that would be really neat to see what people are creating out there and just, just have fun with it. Hopefully you all enjoy making comics as much as we do.